Thank you all for your time today and your con continued commitment to improve our maritime supply chain. I believe this is a critical step to the long-term health of our system of supply chain movement. I wanna call on especially our uh, BTA staff that facilitated each breakout session. I uh, speak for our, our, our session. I thought it was really uh, instructive, uh, interesting. Uh, I, I commend all of the people that were in, in, on our uh, uh, breakout session. Um, and, uh, and I'm gonna call on our BTA uh, uh, staff that uh, facilitated and reported. I think the facilitator will provide uh, a, uh, an assessment. Uh, and so uh, the breakout session uh, number one was Ian Cook and Grant Kidwell, who was the reporter. Uh, breakout session number two was uh, Dylan Richmond, the facilitator and Grace Wong uh, uh, as, the, as the reporter. Uh, breakout session three, uh, Jeremy Lutz and uh, Dr. Kristen Monaco uh, uh, as uh, a facilitator and reporter. Uh, um, and uh, breakout session four, Ellen Gallantucci and uh, Melissa Wallace Johnson as the um, facilitator and reporter, respectively. And so I'll start with you, Ian. Ian, are you ready to, to proceed? I am. Can I, can I call you back in a minute? Yep. Okay, bye. bye. All right, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, kick us off. We had an excellent conversation. Uh, so I guess I'll start with our data definitions. Uh, for container availability, I think the, um, the good, one of the best points that was brought up was that, uh, you know, we often think of co as container ability, uh, availability as uh, customs release which is certainly a component of it, but it is not the whole picture. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, it's also the best uh, setup to notify and uh, best keep track uh, through a central system uh, of the status of the container. And so many people use that as a proxy uh, to, but you get inaccuracies between the actual physical release of the box or uh, its readiness location in a terminal. So those are all factors that have to be considered when, uh, when you're looking at the full uh, definition of container availability. Uh, as far as earliest return date, I think uh, it's very common to have, um, you know, five days uh, you know, before your before your ship arrives, and off, off with our with our current uh, congestion, that complicates matters. But uh, bef but before that, you also had uh, other reasons for ships coming in late or uh, other kinds of delays, and that uh, that five days would often get rolled without people getting told, which can result in detention and demurrage. Uh, so there there were a lot of calls in our group for automated systems that can make adjustments to ERD uh, so that we can avoid penalizing BCOs for uh, trying to keep up with a shifting target. In terms of uh, data transmission and data access, um, the, the question uh, as to obstacles provide uh, that uh, exist for BCO information going to supply chain partners, uh, there are more than 50 portals where that kind of information is distributed. So BCOs often don't even know that some of them exist, some don't, or to, that they need to update some or all or whatever. And uh, that, can, that, that is a problem in and of itself. There's also the matter of um, customer privacy and access control. So that, and that goes uh, to the difference between the, the master bill of lading information versus what's on the house bill of lading. Uh, there's also, um, uh, and then that, that problem is compounded in the next piece of the question, uh, which is the adoption of APIs. So there's actually been some BCO hesitancy in uh, participating in APIs because of the lack of standardization and questions about access control for that information. And until, we, until more uh, standardization is seen in this sphere, there, there's gonna be reluctance to, uh, to participate. 
then in our final section, uh, HS codes. Uh, one of the one of the best comments about uh, what that I heard was that it is uh, it's both broad and narrow at the same time, and so it's a very it's a very complicated uh, or more complicated than it initially looks, and so. Uh, it's really something where you need the expert practitioner uh, in order to properly make the best use of H HS codes, especially out to six digits. So those those are the main takeaways from our session. Uh, so thanks very much. Okay, thank you very much, Ian. Uh, Dylan, you prepared to move forward? Yes, sir. All right, so I was in breakout group number two. And this group started with the data transmission and data access question. Um, overall, participants noted that standardization and interoperability are paramount um, when it comes to sort of data transmission. Um, all parties need to be on the same page, particularly with regards to um, definitions of the data. And that is not the case. Um, it was also interesting you know, the questions were sort of phrased as sort of, I believe, um, providing data from the BCOs into the various transport parties. Um, but our group sort of flipped it to some extent. It's like, all right, we are trying to get the information from us to the BCOs and ensure it's on the right page. Um, and another challenge they mentioned is that sort of multiple parties are involved in exchanging and handling the data. It could lead to redundancies. And that as information is updated, it needs to be, you know, ensured that the right entity is updating the data and that sort of information gets pushed out. Um, some information that could be utilized for an API include ERDs for export cargo, terminal gate schedules, last free day, origin destination relevant to imports, and the next mode of transport um, for import cargo, whether that's on truck or rail. Um, Real quick on the next question regarding data quality and classification. Overall, uh, attendees said that there was no problem in adopting the six digit code in the bill of lading and manifest documents. Um, the biggest obstacle was that sometimes the BCO might be unsure of what HS code its cargo falls under. Um, but from a technical standpoint, everyone agreed that that was doable. Um, and for the electronic bills of lading, um, most participants were very eager to see further implementation of them, noting that it saves time and money compared to paper versions. But the biggest obstacle involves regulations that differ across countries. I guess some countries still require uh, paper bills of lading. And so there, that sort of is hindering uh, further implementation of the electronic bills of lading. So that was our group. Okay, uh, Jeremy, who uh, who was the facilitator for for my uh, group breakout session number three, are you ready to go? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, so I was uh, helping facilitate breakout group number three. Um, it had a lot of great discussion. Uh, we managed to get through uh, pretty much all the questions uh, that that were posed today. Uh, very lively discussion with a lot of participation from people from different parts of the industry. So uh, it was good to, to see those different perspectives. Um, really, a lot of our time was spent on topics uh, two and three, uh, which is data transmission, data access, and then data quality and classification. Um, and really what we determined was there is a lot of uh, lack of data, data fluidity, uh, there's also issues with uh, the data accuracy. Uh, and so I think what a lot of uh, participants really wanted to see was a lot of good, accurate data around um, you know, knowing what commodities are in the box, uh, who owns it, whether the commodity is traveling, you know, by what method, it, whether it's traveling a short or long distance, and whether uh, you know, commodities within even say a single container might be going to different destinations because all of those things from just a proper planning uh, and efficiency standpoint uh, are incredibly important. Um, and so that's that's a good portion of, of the conversation that we had today. Uh, and so I think that's a good overview for, for our discussion. Thanks, uh, thanks, Jeremy. And 
Uh, uh, bad and cleanup, uh, number four, uh, breakout session number four, Alan. We had a wonderful discussion in our group, and I, I don't. We've we discussed some of the things that the other um, three have already talked about. So I'll um, discuss some things that were sort of um, that haven't really been mentioned. Um, one of the things that we had a lot of discussion about was um, places in the places where um, maybe we don't certain entities don't want um, information shared for either confidentiality reasons um, or security reasons. Um, for example, one of the examples that was given was, um, you know, we don't want people to publicly know that there's a container full of PlayStations, you know, sitting at the port. Um, and so that was sort of, it, th those types of things were creating some, um, some reasons to um, not be more open with some of the data that's available. Um, and we also had a very long discussion in our group about APIs and uh, adopting APIs. Um, one of the concerns was just that the data infrastructure and the technology takes a lot of time and a lot of money to be able to um, implement these things, um, as well as um, that some entities aren't don't don't have the capability. There are a lot of very small pieces, um, very small um, uh, trucking companies, for example, who don't have the means to. Um, implement, you know, you, to use APIs. They just don't have the the um, the, the technology available to do that. Um, and and data security concerns. If we have all of this information available in some centralized location, um, that that if somebody is able to access that system, it creates um, it, it could wreak havoc on the entire supply chain. Um, and so those were some of the concerns where um, uh, there was there's movement toward things like APIs. There's movement toward um, you know more data sharing. I think within um, among the people in our group, but there were also a lot of concerns about what that actually looks like in practice. Right, uh, Alan, that was uh, very good. I'm, I'm glad uh, we, these uh, breakout sessions went so well. Um, and uh, in case you have <laughs> comments or uh, information that you want to submit, uh, you can submit it to maritime data at fmc.gov by email. We're keeping it open until June 8th. Again, it's maritime data, one word at fmc.gov. So please provide any information um, uh, that you have or want to pr present and that's uh, to the public. Uh, and we will look at all comments and review them and all suggestions. Uh, this is not uh, the last of our work uh, pr uh, product. Uh, we'll be uh, work, uh, looking at uh, all of the comments that have been made, reviewing the tapes uh, and uh, we will be uh, providing uh, drafting rec recommendations uh, for the industry and the commission. I think we're uh, setting up a meeting in, in July for uh, my fellow commissioners to review uh, preliminary recommendations. And then we're going to go out and meet uh, further with the, with the industry uh, during the summer um, uh, to get uh, further input after we've uh, uh, come out with some pr uh, preliminary recommendations. You know, this is just too big uh, an issue not to address. And I think we all recognize uh, what has happened in the last two years and the value of the industry, the incredible importance to get it right. And, and, and this may be a longer term project, uh, but I'm truly committed uh, to make sure um, uh, that we get it done right, and that we can that we can set up a way to to utilize the infrastructure that we have, which is strained. It's uh, straining. It's straining under a lot of cargo, and so. Uh, but it's too important not to uh, invest. It's it's a shame that uh, the federal government um, has been a little um, behind uh, with what we need. Uh, as an industry to do better. So uh, uh, we're having discussions with the administration. Uh, we're in continual contact with them uh, about issues uh, and we'll continue that. Uh, they're looped in and, and, and we're uh, in lockstep on how to make this better. Um, there will be uh, new op obstacles and opportunities to better integrate data into the supply chain. Uh, I'm interested in track and uh, trace technologies, smart containers, um, and this, this concept 
has been around uh, for for a while and that we're doing it in some areas but uh, but I want to make sure that if we do this that it, the data is collected and shared uh, in a way that is harmonized with with uh, standards that we're looking at right now um, I'm also concerned that uh, that this not be involved as an uh, opportunity to to interfere with uh, collective bargaining. Uh, that's uh, something that the commission does not uh, get involved with. And so, um, also interested in some of the information on uh, bills of lading and uh, and cargo information. I am very cognizant of the fact that we are going to stay away from from information related to competition. Or that could Im uh, that could impact the security. I think, as as Alan mentioned, of, of cargo shipments. But I do believe that there is some room for some information to be provided that can make uh, the efficiency of uh, movement uh, 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 more. And and we we have to look at it. So um, so these are uh, critical issues moving forward. I really uh, want to uh, say uh, that uh, I appreciate the efforts that you all have made. I, I, I spoke uh, earlier today ab about uh, the fact that we had almost everyone willing to come here in Washington, D.C. and to meet in person. And I think it's a testament, uh, a testament to the commitment you all have as, uh, as per people, participants in the Maritime Transportation uh, Data Initiative. And I am looking forward to calling on you again. Uh, this is all voluntary and you and your companies have done a, a great job in, in helping, um, helping us move forward. Uh, uh, finally, I, I wanna make sure that there's a US po policy in place that results in the implementation of national standards for maritime transportation data transparency. I will be engaging in this issue as we move forward with our data recommendations. You have all helped Im immeasurably and we will be back in uh, touch, uh, perhaps even in person. And we look forward to continued efforts with you in the future. Uh, and with that, I wanna uh, thank everyone, th thank the staff of the FMC who put in a lot of effort and in, in, in making this work. Uh, and uh, the participants who, who are there and, and with us uh, lockstep and uh, look forward to the next steps. And with that, Carl, I think you can end the recording.